Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back uh, to another webinar in our webinar series for 2021. Today, um, we're just going to continue our normal webinar series that we've been having with the International Merchant Management Society, and we're going to continue with a discussion um, about the FEDIS project. So before we get started with all of that, I want to do the normal sort of administrative remarks. And as you know, as we've been going throughout the series this year, we've had a number of events. We've had 19 events so far with 1,640 attendees from 66 nations. And just a few quick administrative points before we get started. And that is, of course, let us know where you're joining us from and where exactly you are. And just let us know by dropping that into the chat so we can see where everybody's from. If you do have a question during the webinar uh, today, just use the Q&A feature. And we like to use the Q&A feature because it actually prints out a report for us and we can see the questions that we were able to answer and the ones that we missed. If we are not able to answer your question today, we will certainly follow up with the, the panelists and the speakers and we will post that inside of our LinkedIn group, which you can see here. So what we recommend everybody do is, of course, follow this LinkedIn group where we have our event here and basically join the group and you join about 340 other um, emergency managers and other uh, personnel that work in the international space. And you can also follow CBI where I'm the managing director and then also, of course, Teams on social media to stay updated. And we do post the webinar recordings, the question and answers, and other uh, information inside that event as well. All right, so uh, that was just a really quick introduction. And now what I'm gonna do is to turn it over, as we talked about this, is gonna be about the IPITUS project today. And I'm gonna turn it over to Harold. Harold, good to see you again. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Kyle. Okay, here is the program. This is about the IPITUS project. It's an EU project which is uh, funded by the European Union. It's a Horizon 2020 project and Teams is a partner. And we actually participate with 12 Teams members from seven countries around the world. And this is one of the benefits of Teams members. So think about becoming a member and be able to participate in future projects we are involved in. The program today is uh, Joe Gorman from Sintef. He will tell about the impetus project overview and the expected results. Then followed by Jelena Radosevic from Croatia and ISP about the impetus public opinion survey on ethical issues on, in smart cities technologies. Three, we need to know about the platform. This project is developing a platform and integrating different tools. This will be done by Radu Popescu from Simavi in Romania. And he, this platform is then integrated with different tools and uh, Synodit from Switzerland with Joe Levy. He will tell about one of the tools. It's the weapon detection tool. And then the next tool is uh, social media threats detection tool, which is uh, told by Joaquin Luzo Tuels from Insect in Spain. And the, the best thing to know is that we are using and testing this out in two cities. One city is city of Oslo and Osman Mohamed Ibrahim. He will tell about how this solution is implemented in the Oslo city where we also will have a test next week. And at the end of these presentations, Sander Bologna from Teams, he will tell about the uh, Cossack network, it's, um, which it's possible for people to join. And with that short introduction, I like Joe to go on and start uh, doing his presentation and then the other ones will follow. So thank you very much, uh, Harold, for the introduction on Impetus. So um, I'm Joe Gorman, coordinator of the project, and I'm joining you today from just outside of Trondheim in Norway. And uh, the fjord behind me doesn't look quite so sunny today as winter's drawing in around us. So I, I want to give you an overview of what the project's about and its main results. And then the, the other presentations that follow are going to fill in in some detail on some of the things that I'll mention. So just a few facts about the project. So it's a Horizon 2020 project, that's from the, the European Union. Uh, 
we have a total budget of 9.3 million euro. We started uh, just over a year ago and will continue until uh, February 2023. And the project is about improving security of public spaces. That's what it's all about. We have a, a consortium consisting of 16 partners. I, I won't go through all of the partners individually, but just to say that one of the key things in a collaborative project like this is to have project partners of different kinds. So we mix research, industry, NGOs, and then the two cities that will be the test sites. But in addition to the organizations that are partners in the project itself and receiving funding from Brussels, we also have established something called COSEC. Uh, and this is kind of a way to collaborate with our project without actually being formally a partner. And the last point on the agenda today is from Sandro, he'll tell you much more about how COSEC operates. So where are we? We started in September and here we are kind of getting, not quite halfway through, but, but not far off it now. The time scale that we're working to here, I have to say, is rather challenging. But as Harold mentioned, we have our first trial in Oslo already next week. And I think that's a very major milestone in the project. Another trial in Padova a few weeks after that. So what is it all about? Well, as I mentioned, it's about improving security in public spaces. But our approach combines three different things in that respect. We'll be talking later today about technology and various tools. That is one of the three components of the project. Technology in itself doesn't help very much if you ignore the processes that people work on and how people go about their work on a daily basis. And finally, there are ethical, legal, data privacy issues that impinge on all of this. And impetus is at the intersection of these three areas of concern. So we want to say, can technologies actually help and in what way? How will they affect the way that we work and how can we do that in an optimal way? And how can these ethical and legal concerns be safeguarded against problems and how do we handle those? So that, that is the three main parts of the project. I mentioned now this concept of smart cities, which is very fashionable and that's where we are aiming at. But what does that actually mean? And what advantages and challenges does it give us? But by smart cities, we mean cities where we're starting to use technology in a big way. We might use the word sensor in its most general term to mean cameras, traffic sensors, even people working for the city reporting in information. This concept of Internet of Things, where there's Internet everywhere in every device you have, in your telephone, in your pocket, you have critical infrastructure is now very much controlled by IT systems uh, and artificial intelligence is also beginning to become very to the fore in making all kinds of decisions on, on a day by day basis in the operation of cities. Now, Impetus says, great, that gives us lots of possibilities. It allows us to use these technologies to make cities work better to make us understand better what the situation is, if an emergency should arise, and to help us to make decisions. So impetus, on the one hand, is about helping those kind of things. But on the other hand, these technologies also pose with them risks. So cyber attacks, we've all heard about those. Once you start using technology in a big way, you're more vulnerable than you were before. And this thing about personal data, there can be ethical issues around that. So Impetus has its two sides. It wants to help the good things and it wants to combat the bad things. I want to tell you what the results are that we hope to get out of the project. And, and that falls into essentially three different areas. First of all, there's a set of tools, and I'll say a little bit more about that in the moment. In a moment, so there are various different tools doing various different things. 
that we, th we think can help in protection of public spaces. But as Harold has also mentioned, we also have this thing that we call the impetus platform. And the role of the platform is to kind of integrate and intertwine the different tools into one common platform. And why do that? Two main reasons. One is it allows operators to use multiple tools through one user interface. But perhaps more fundamentally, it allows the different tools to exchange data with each other. So one tool can be useful on its own, another one can be useful on its own, but combining them the two together where the output from one is the input to another can maybe give us added value that we didn't have before. So that's the technology results. The second thing is what we call practitioner's guides. And we intend to produce three of these. And the idea of these in three different areas is really to give people who are going to adopt the technology in smart cities in the future advice about how to do that in a smart and effective way. To give them do's and don'ts. You know, we find this is a good way to do things. This is a bad way to do things. But also to give information that they need to know, give training on how to use tools, and so on. And we see these in being in three different areas. Operations, that means the processes that you follow, the whole issue of cybersecurity, and then this issue of ethics, legal, and data privacy. And finally, at the very end of the project, we want to put together in some kind of document or presentational or video, we don't know the format yet, but simply the lessons learned. What did we learn from Impetus about how to do things and how not to do things at a higher level? That can be used as input to other projects. It can be used as input to people using our tools. It can be used as input to politicians, policymakers, whoever. But we feel that when you invest a lot of money in a project, you do learn things along the way, and it's very important then that other people can learn from what went well and learn from maybe things that didn't go so well. I'll have one final slide on results, and, and that's to tell you about these individual tools. You're going to hear some more details about some of them later, but of course, there's not time to tell you about all of them. In a rough kind of way, our tools are split into when in the process they might most likely be used. So for before some kind of event happens, we want to simulate things and from that learn lessons. So that's one of the tools. When some kind of problem is imminent but hasn't yet happened, we have tools to do detection. So social media detection, weapon detection, biological risk detection. I don't have time to go into details of all of these, and you'll hear some of them later. Then there's tools that look at when something is actually happening, cyber attacks or physical attacks or physical problems like doing evacuations. And this thing here on human computer interaction, this is about, okay, we have this fancy platform, we have these fancy tools, we have people in a stress situation using them. Can we measure how well that's doing? Can we give advice on how to use these tools in a, an optimal way? And finally, after events on the cyber thing, we want to optimize things to work more effectively in the future. Finally, I want to mention, I already have mentioned, but this time with two nice pictures, we have two cities in the project. We have Oslo here represented by its opera house. You would have thought that might have been the Italian city that had the opera house, but no, it's Oslo that we chose for that. And here we have a Padova in Italy with some nice artwork. Both these cities have slightly different dynamics. They have things that are the same between them, things that are different. We want to try the tools in both of these. And we do that in three phases. The thing we do next week, is what we call technical acceptance. We want to try them out, see if they work. Later, we'll apply them in a more realistic setting, but with no intervention. And finally, we'll really try a proper simulation. 
I think Harold already showed this slide telling you about our website and uh, where you can get more information. But for now, that's all I would like to say. And I'll leave it to my colleagues now to give you some more meat, more details on some of these things. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Joe. And uh, Yelena, you can now share the screen and do your presentation. Thank you. Floor is yours. Thank you, Harold, for introducing me. Um, I'm really happy to present to you uh, what ISP has done in the beginning of the project. So on behalf of the Institute for Security Policies, that is a partner in this project uh, focused on ethical and legal aspects of the project. We are also a socially focused institute and what we did in the beginning of the project was a public opinion survey. So we organized it and conducted it in communication with all the other impetus partners. Um, now you heard from Joe, what are the results and what are the goals of the project? So you probably know that whenever you are introducing something new to a local community, it's very good to see, to explore what the local community thinks about it, what are the vibes of the local community and um, how open are they to new things? So this is actually the goal of the opinion survey. We wanted to see, uh, do the citizens of Oslo and Padova mainly know what are smart city solutions? Are they open to them? Do they worry about them? And that is why we created this survey. Uh, we also um, did the survey in three other European cities. These are Madrid, uh, Zagreb and Bucharest because we wanted to have a pan-European perspective and also some kind of media, media uh, values to compare the answers from the citizens of Oslo and Padova too. We did this by the CATI uh, method. This is computer-assisted telephone interviewing. And we chose about 500 citizens in each of the cities uh, to ask the questions to. And uh, this was uh, gender and age-wise evenly distributed. So what they actually wanted to determine is, do citizens know what smart cities are? Uh, what is their opinion on smart city technology in general? And are they thinking about, worried about the possibility of unethical use of smart city technology? The answers uh, were supposed to give some guidelines to the local uh, authorities, so to the cities of uh, Oslo and Padova, and maybe to um, in invite them to do some actions uh, like awareness raising or education, or just to see uh, what are the possible future steps, the dialogue between the local community. So we could also adapt the products of the impetus project to fit the needs uh, of the local community itself. As Joe mentioned, uh, there are some similarities, but also some differences between Oslo and Padua, and we will see what they are. So here in short, uh, I'd like to present to you uh, the results uh, of this survey. With the first column, you can see the topics of the questions, uh, and maybe you could use those in maybe some of your future uh, surveys you will, you will do in some of your projects. Uh, in the second column are the results of the citizens of Padova here in this slide, and the EU average uh, that we um, got from uh, the cities of Madrid, Zagreb, and Bucharest. Okay, so uh, what's uh, interesting for Padova is uh, that it seems that a lot of citizens of Padova know what smart cities are. So there is no need for further education of the uh, citizens on that topic. Uh, they also think that it's necessary to use SC technology uh, mainly in the smart management of healthcare and the security sector, while they don't think it's very important to use it in warning systems for high air pollution, danger of floods, landslides, and earthquakes. Uh, as for the trends in the smart city technologies, they have improved, uh, the, the citizens of Padova say. Uh, as for the general perception of safety, the citizens think that the safety in their city has improved in the last years. Um, and they are not very wor worried about the violation of privacy rights and identity theft could say much less than the EU average. What we can uh, conclude is they, they are worried about the use of their personal data for unnecessary or unwanted purposes, which is 
uh, higher than the EU average. Also, they are not concerned about misuse of personal information or the data collected by the SC services. Um, the results in Oslo are a bit different. So uh, what the, the analysis results say is that the citizens of Oslo are not very familiar with the concept of smart cities. But after talking with, uh, with Osman actually, uh, and other team members from Oslo, uh, it is probable that they are not so familiarized with the term smart city. But uh, as Oslo has uh, already introduced some of the SC uh, technologies uh, to uh, the city, they're probably familiarized with the, uh, with the tools and some of the technologies. As for the necessity to use smarter city technology, uh, the citizens of Oslo think uh, it's very important to use it in public transportation and warning systems for high uh, air pollution, danger of floods, landslides and earthquakes. Where, uh, while they don't think it's very important in the sector of security. The next slide, we'll see why. Um, as for the trends in using smart city technology, so you don't see it below this, this screen share uh, icon, but um, they're not very worried about their uh, digital competences to, to manage the smart city solutions. Okay. Here we have the general perception of safety and the citizens of Oslo think that their city is really safe. And we can connect this to the previous slide because if they feel safe, they do not think it's necessary to uh, invest in security sector when it comes to SC technology as well. As for the violation of privacy rights and identity thefts, uh, they are uh, a bit more worried than the citizens of Padova and the EU average. Um, and of course, and also they're the most worried about the use of their personal data for unnecessary or unwanted purposes. They're somewhat worried about the misuse of personal information and um, misuse of data um, given to the smart cities. Okay, hopefully in this really short uh, presentation, I've given you some topics of the survey, which I say again, you can maybe use in some of your projects to explore uh, the views and opinions of uh, the local community you work with. And um, I would like to say also that this is not um, the last thing we're doing in this, um, in this sphere within the project, because we, we have also created a web survey. And hereby, I would kindly like to ask you to uh, complete our web survey, which you can find at the impetus-project.eu website. Uh, you can click here on the language of your preference. Uh, if you have some time and will to share this link with your colleagues and friends, we would be much obliged because um, we're interested in what the international uh, public thinks of the topic as well. So we can put the perception of the citizens of Oslo and Padova into even better perspective. Okay, so this was a really short presentation and um, I promise to give you more details and hopefully some next steps that will be developed by the Teams conference in December. So hereby I also invite you to join us uh, for this topic in December. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jelena and uh, Radu. Uh, when Jelena has uh, stopped sharing, now you are able to share your screen and do your presentation. So now we will listen about how is the platform intended to be used and integrate the tools. The floor is yours, Radu. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Radu Popescu and I will share with you some uh, information about the platform developed uh, in the Impetus project. Uh, the main objective of the platform is to collect and share information between security and uh, emergency actors. The Impetus platform will serve as a central information hub supporting security and emergency operations through providing analytics and user-centered visualizations of data collected from smart city systems like sensors or computing and network assets. This main objective is supported by uh, the platform through threat detection, classification and monitoring and uh, response optimization. Concerning threat detection, Impetus uh, detection capabilities include weapon detection through the use of AI enabled CCTV cameras 
biochemical contamination through air monitoring. About uh, threat classification and monitoring, we will use uh, artificial intelligence and data fusion for anomaly detection and pattern recognition, allowing smart city operators to roll out false alerts and only focus on real threat. Concerning response optimization, Impetus will optimize human computer interaction. For example, visualization tools, uh, operator cognitive load monitoring, and uh, it will facilitate communication between city stakeholders and the uh, uh, public through social media alerts, for example. The platform is developed with uh, the following uh, characteristic in view. The platform should be modular. The module operations are kept separate so they can run independently and potentially be swapped out or replaced by other modules in the future if dictated by the evolution of the platform. Another characteristic is module interoperability. And uh, for this purpose, the common data format for data exchange between modules will be used. The platform should be open and extensible and future-proofed by using a set of APIs which can, which can be used by third-party developers to add new functionalities to the solution without requiring a major redesign of the platform. Also, the platform will use IoT and cloud computing approaches that will reduce the risks associated with excessive centralization of large amounts of smart city data. The capabilities uh, of the platform are uh, presented here, access control, alerting, integration, security, and data visualization. And we'll explore this uh, these capabilities in, uh, in the next slides. So about access control. Within the, uh, uh, the access uh, within the platform will be controlled uh, by, uh, by roles, which allow access to certain features and functionalities. The platform will implement access control policies that will uh, uh, dictate who can access information, where and when, and uh, it will support simultaneous users uh, connected. Um, regarding the authentication uh, platform used, uh, used uh, it is a key clock. This is a more uh, technical detail. Um, this uh, tool uh, brings uh, uh, features like single sign-on, so a user can uh, log in once to the Impetus platform and access uh, uh, multiple applications that uh, participate in this uh, single sign-on mechanism. So the platform will be able to connect to existing user directories through, through the use of LDAP and Active Directory. We support standard protocols like OpenID Connect, OAuth2, or uh, SAML2. And of course, it will uh, uh, allow centralized management of users for administrators. Uh, regarding the alerting capabilities, the platform integrates tools specialized on different security aspects of smart cities. Tools uh, uh, that will implement, uh, for example, weapon detection, cyber threats, uh, big data analysis. The alerts raised by the integrated tools are centralized and presented to users in dashboards, in dashboards that can be tool specific or uh, general dashboards that aggregate uh, information from, uh, from all the tools. This is a small uh, preview of uh, how the dashboards uh, can look. This will evolve, uh, of course, uh, through the project uh, following discussions uh, between partners and uh, with uh, with the end users. Um, about the internal integration uh, in, uh, of the plat uh, capabilities of the platform, uh, it will be modular, so it integrates a number of tools defined in the project, but individual tools can be added or removed without disturbing the functionality of the platform. Individual modules can be swapped and replaced. So, uh, the platform does not depend on the performance of one module or tool. Concerning data integration, the statuses, alerts, and support information from tools is centralized at platform level. And um, there will be a, a data enrichment process um, by uh, combining the outputs of various tools and derive new information 
or uh, raising the confidence level uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the alerts raised by the tools. Uh, the platform will use the standardized communication um, by defining a data format uh, that the tools will, uh, will respect. The security is an important aspect in the project, considering that the tools and the platform work with the city data, some of which can be private or sensitive. So the security is implemented by following uh, best practices like uh, using up-to-date software concerning uh, databases, web servers, uh, operating systems, uh, also training the users of the platform and raising awareness on the security considerations. Here we can mention that the project will also produce a security framework adapted to the project partner cities. Data in transit uh, or in storage will be protected uh, through techniques like encryption, anonymization, obfuscation. The platform and the city infrastructure will be assessed for vulnerabilities uh, using uh, uh, one of the tools involved in the project, uh, breach and attack simulation. And of course, we uh, aim for GDPR compliance for the platform. Concerning the external integration, uh, the platform supports uh, external inform uh, integration in form of sharing information with other trusted organization, which uh, may, are not part of the impetus operating environment. As a special case of information sharing, uh, we should mention sending alerts to operators across different organizations. The impetus platform uh, interacts with uh, devices and platforms in the cities. About the user interface and the user experience, uh, we can say that the platform uh, uses uh, multiple languages. So uh, operators from uh, different countries can uh, use it. It uh, aggregates data and uh, it, uh, presents diagrams um, in order to allow strategic monitoring and uh, planning. The platform uses some techniques to improve the user's ex experience like uh, a common terminology and symbology, um, different forms of interaction uh, adapted to the situation and the user profile in order to minimize the cognitive load of the operators and increase the reaction time in case of emergency. Here we present a logical overview of the impact of the architecture of the Impetus platform. Uh, we can see here that the the platform integrates data from nine tools. Uh, the data is presented to the users through a common front end. And uh, the user uh, is able to access uh, the tool's own uh, UI for more in-depth data exploration. The tool works with the data shared by partner cities, data from their agencies or sensors. Um, during our uh, Investigations, we have found that there already exists a solution that correspond, corresponds to this logical architecture. And this is a snap for city uh, short for Smart Analytic Application Builder, sorry, uh, for sentient cities and IoT. snap for city uh, is a project developed uh, as uh, an, an R&D project funded by EU. Here it presents the general architecture of this solution. Uh, without going uh, in much detail, uh, we should mention some uh, key aspects. It supports integration with multiple data sources like databases, HTTP services, uh, MQTT, M MQP. It contains a dashboard builder. Dashboards designed uh, uh, with it can be used on screen walls in control centers. The dashboards can be filled with widgets that can present static or dynamic data and allow interaction with operator from the dashboards. Uh, from the dashboards, it is possible to also produce and send data to other components. This, plan, uh, this solution uses open source and well-established technologies like Keycloak, MySQL, Node-RED, NiFi, or Elasticsearch. And uh, it has flexible deployment options that can adapt to various uh, scenarios. This is a small example of how the dashboards are visible in the platform. 
here we created the dashboards for the three of the tools integrated uh, that will be finally integrated in the platform. This is uh, the dashboard for one of the tools. We can see that it is possible to combine static uh, and uh, graphs, static data and graphs. And um, this is uh, an example of data ingestions using uh, the node root, node red component. Uh, Node-RED uses the visual programming paradigm. Uh, that means it supports uh, blocks that implement various functionalities. And the way the blocks are linked describes the processing of data. Uh, in this case, the data is pulled from Kafka. Um, well, the contrast is not very good. Um, the data is transformed in a proper format for saving. And then the data is uh, stored in a in database yeah thank you so thank you awesome. yeah thank you Radu. now you have an idea of the platform and time is now to go to look at some of the tools good evening everyone my name is joe levy actually joachim levy uh, co-founder and ceo at synedit we are an intelligent video analytics company that specializes in uh, weapon uh, detection. Uh, right now, I'm calling from our lab in uh, Tel Aviv, our R&D lab, and our headquarters based in uh, Switzerland. So what is the tool of weapon detection for impetus that you've heard before? Well, our mission is to detect weapon to prevent loss of life. It is pretty straightforward. But we have something additional that we want to provide. It's not only that when you see a weapon, when our system, artificial intelligence system detects a weapon, then we provide what we call instant situational awareness. As you can see on the slide on the left, a person holding a gun that happened actually in Brooklyn in April of last year, two in the morning, then when we trigger an alert, we allow the end user to be able to pinpoint the location by a GPS. They have the visual coordinates and then they can relay whether the emergency is a real emergency or a false alert. But we have a big problem when we work with AI. You see, we use the latest machine learning and AI algorithms. And it is true actually very true that detecting a weapon is extremely hard because the camera angle and the environment is never the same. Look at the images below. On the bottom left, you see a camera detecting a gun in the shopping mall. Second to the left, that's at the Expo 2020, which was a reenactment in Abu Dhabi. Uh, third, uh, on the right, you have our guy, which is, was a real shooter in New York in color. And to the left of that, that's in the garden in Miami. The angle is never the same. So ultimately, undetected weapons will lead to expensive site closure and loss of life. The reason it's very simple, it's because the AI that we use cannot be automatically calibrated when the camera angle changes. If you look on the left, this is the terrible Charlie Hebdo attack, where this is a few frames before the policeman who's on the floor was shot to death in the head by the two attackers. Had he known that his opponents were heavily armed, it is obvious that he would have not been deployed. Instead, it would have been the local SWAT team. We have the very known Christchurch on the bottom right event that did capture the event using a CCTV camera. Um, and again, no alert, no situation awareness provided to the law enforcement, to the first responders. So as a result, weapon existing, I would say weapon detection system, they constantly produce false alerts and they never learn from it. And it's extremely annoying for a SOC operator to receive false alarm. Let me give you an example. I'm sure everybody was once in a home or you had your alarm system on and then your alarm provider keeps calling you, hey, we've detected some movements outdoor and you're like, no, everything's fine. You know, oh, it's probably the trees. And that, that is so annoying. But when that happens over and over and over, 
and it's a failure. So how can you make sure that a weapon detector learns, that an artificial intelligence learns from the false alerts? Well, first of all, to detect weapon, the AI needs to be super accurate. All right, fine, we'll give you that. But in our company, for instance, when you make an AI, you have a very good general weapon detector model. But then you need to retrain it. And in order to retrain a general model, data sharing is key from wherever you will be deploying in order to avoid false alerts. So here we have two problems. The first problem is that it is true that data sharing between smart cities and high-tech companies like ours is very limited due to GDPR compliance. And number two, when you deploy a weapon detector that was engineered in a place and you deploy it in a different environment, it is unstable. It will create false alerts. And that's what we call AI drifting. And then the predictions, they're false, erroneous. So let me just give you a small example of a linear regression of what I mean, uh, where we simply map the independent value variable x, i, of course, to predict the target variable y. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> You're probably right now asking yourself, what did just happen? What is that? Well, let, let, let's go back to the basics and forget the math for a second. The formula you just saw, the equation that you just saw, that y, that's called AI drifting. It's mathematic. And it means that any AI needs to be retrained to remain accurate in order to have a correct y value. Now, it's like an update, meaning I'm sure that we all have phones, smartphones, like that one right now. If I have an app and I need to update it, then I'm going to download an updated version so that it works better. It's exactly the same thing with artificial intelligence. So this update, when we update the AI, it prevents drifting. It keeps the weapon detection tool very accurate. And to do this, we need our leads, we need our partner cities in Impetus that we've started already, thank God, it's beautiful. They provide sample data as input to the retraining process of our artificial intelligence. That's the reason why a lot of competitors would fail because we're not a video management software company. We are a pure AI deep tech company. Therefore, there's a key element. You see that slide on the left, you see our user interface, and you see a man that's holding a gun, but he's completely obfuscated. We're waiting to have a certain level of confidence in order to reveal his biometric data. When we're sure that it's a gun, boom, we show you the image, we show you the face. This is one of the GDPR regulation that we must respect. So when you add that GDPR regulations in order to make better AI models for smart cities, it can be, and it is everyone we know, challenging and time consuming. However, when you follow the appropriate procedures like we have been doing at Synedit and the technical safeguards, it let us share data in a very good GDPR compliant way. And that, ladies and gentlemen, allows high tech companies to build better AIs, to prevent AI drifting, and it makes you safer. With GDPR compliant sharing of sample data, we help you remain safe and we prevent terror attacks to provide instant situational awareness. Sadly, without Train AI, the tragic event that happened in November 2015 in Paris are more likely to happen. I can only reiterate the 90 dead 
that happen in the first 10 minutes of the attack that happened at the Bataclan. So my question is to all of you, what are you going to do about it? Please, artificial intelligence companies that are working in public safety, we're not here to sell data and share it. We are here to make your life and your cities safer by making them smarter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, then we take the next tool. There are nine tools, as Joe said in the beginning. We have another tool looking into the social media where you also can have threats. Joaquin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Harold. Okay, so my name is Joaquin Luzon. I work for Insect Intelligence, a company in Barcelona, Spain, uh, and we are providing the social media tool, social media detection tool, uh, to the Impetus project. Uh, first of all, let me contextualize a little bit uh, by explaining what we do at Insight. Uh, we um, know that uh, social media produces a lot of information and millions of messages per hour that uh, are generated in social media and websites. Uh, we know that uh, this many of this information is not relevant in the context of security for the cities and the citizens. Uh, unfortunately, there is also a wide number of uh, radical content, terrorist messages, hate speech, fake news, bullying and harassment, uh, flowing real time uh, across multiple social medias and, and web platforms. And in the end, all of this data contains traces of criminal activity, uh, which possess a threat to cities and its cities. Our mission is to take advantage of our proprietary technology to provide society with uh, tools that help these or, um, help organizations, such as uh, the municipalities, the cities, to find the, to find meaning in the data that is produced by social media, especially to prevent crime and save lives. Uh, one of these tools is a social media detection tool uh, that uh, we will integrate in Impetus Project. Um, and the base of this tool is uh, inside uh, one of our commercial tools, uh, Inside Spotlight, uh, that uh, is being redefined to meet the needs of the municipalities uh, participating in the Impact project. At the same time, the insight we will obtain from the validation of our tool uh, in, during the uh, pilots in the project we, will help us to produce social media monitoring tool adaptable to the needs uh, of other cities uh, that might be interested in a platform that collects uh, and analyzes uh, massive amounts of online public data. The social media detection tool uh, objective is to help investigative professionals or security analysts to detect the specific written content from the online data retreat, detecting terror uh, detecting terror, crime threats, uh, activities is possible thanks to the algorithm uh, that the social media tool uh, comes with and that uh, highlights insights that otherwise couldn't be uh, uh, detected among all the available information. The, um, the algorithms I'm talking about uh, are uh, built based on artificial intelligence methods, such as uh, data mining, text mining with natural language processing, big data analysis, and social network analysis. So we uh, were talking about um, a lot of, of text information now, and to process all this textual data uh, and extract, extract all the relevant comprehensive information from the text, uh, the social media detection tool makes use of natural language processing, or NLP, uh, which is an artificial intelligence method that understands the human language. Additionally, uh, the social media detection tool uh, uses machine learning algorithms to create a model on social media that can interpret data uh, that has never seen before. That means that the tool is sophisticated and all enough to detect sentiments, topics, or any clear ideas without the need of human supervision. The tool uh, also comes with uh, algorithms that provide information about the relationships between users and social media, uh, while ensuring the protection of the citizens, anonymizing all the data collected. 
only authorized users uh, such as police officers with express permission and uh, clear justification could be able to identify social media users uh, that might be and uh, that can, that are being an immediate threat to society. For example, announcing an imminent attack. For the social media detection tool in Impetus, uh, we have defined a set of data sources in collaboration with uh, the municipalities of Padova and Oslo uh, that are Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok uh, as uh, social media. And also uh, we will gather data from uh, several online newspapers uh, in Italian and Norwegian that count with uh, a comment section you know, where they also make comments even if it's not a uh, a social, uh, a social network. As the tool comes with a specific scrappers for each of these data sources. And as I was saying before, all that personal data is anonymized. And also the, the data is anonymized at the very, uh, the very early moment of its acquisition. So when it's ingested in the database, it's already anonymized. Well, if the users of the Impetus platform want to receive the data and analyze it, uh, online data and analyze it, uh, the, the way to, to do this is to create a project uh, that uh, this creation will start uh, the data collection of the social media detection tool. Once this project is created, uh, the, tool will, the tool will apply several NLP methodologies uh, that are applied in, in, in five different languages. English, Italian, Norwegian, French, and the Rabbit. This was also uh, defined in collaboration with the municipality. Uh, this analysis will be distributed in a dashboard that will contain several tabs uh, that will contain uh, analysis in different perspectives. Uh, from the, uh, the tool will uh, identify concepts that are uh, nouns, verb, adjectives that are uh, in the text, uh, the, the entities that are relevant locations, people, uh, or organizations, uh, the topics identified in the in the text in the data collected uh, from a predefined list. That means that uh, we can uh, relate messages to politics, to religion, to crime, to COVID, many different uh, topics. Then. Uh, we will be able also to identify key ideas that are specific text patterns in the text and hashtags that will um, let us uh, see messages talking about a specific uh, category. No? And there will be uh, analysis on the sentiment in the publications that contain those concepts, key ideas, topics, uh, hashtags, and entities. And the social media will also analyze the terms that are being used in the publications uh, that are expressing hate speech. And uh, to, to end about uh, presenting the functionalities of the social media tool, I would like to talk about the social network analysis that uh, will lead, lead the analysts to find um, an analysis on the interactions that different uh, users of social media have. No? Uh, this will mean that the user will be able to uh, find interactions uh, between, between users, identify influencers or uh, users that are express uh, spreading relevant or criminal information. And to finish, I would like to show briefly uh, uh, um, extract of or how we would look the, the dashboard of the social media detection tool. Thank you. Thank you, Joaquin. Then the next is how does this uh, really help the city? And uh, we have now a presentation from Oslo, from Osman, how he wants to integrate this in city of Oslo. Osman, you can share your screen, please. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Osman Ibrahim uh, from uh, from city of Oslo, representing uh, the agency for emergency planning, and are um, uh, responsible for our activities in this uh, in this project. 
Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for this um, uh, this occasion to, to share from our thoughts and experience so far in, in Petrus and how we um, look forward to, um, to uh, use these different uh, technologies and uh, the learnings from Impetus. Uh, first of all, uh, Oslo, a compact uh, capital city surrounded by Oslo Fjord in, uh, on the south side and the forest areas in, the north, uh, in other areas. Uh, we are a city um, uh, experience uh, in, in context of impetus, um, experience with uh, different type of uh, crimes, uh, serious crimes, uh, terror attacks from 2011, in 2011. Uh, but at the same time, we also uh, we also uh, see these uh, different um, uh, different risk uh, factors in, in our daily operations also. Uh, we are a city uh, that holds both uh, municipal and, and county uh, functions. So we, yes, uh, so a short uh, about our organization. Uh, how, how are we um, uh, working on the implemented uh, technologies from, uh, from inputs and, and the learnings? Uh, first of all, uh, the organization of, of the city, uh, we are organized in nine different sectors with uh, 25 agencies, municipal undertakings, and districts. So what is uh, uh, what we are addressing in Petrus is all these different SOCs that we have, uh, security operation centers in different uh, agencies um, and, and within the different fields, because we are working not uh, with one city-wide operation center, but many uh, minor SOCs uh, with a focus for whole the city, but are not uh, connected together. So impetus platform is uh, one of uh, the basic foundation that we are working on now to see how we can connect all the different SOCs together uh, with uh, the same the, through the same technologies and the streams that we already have in uh, in our uh, systems and how we can analyze that and uh, inform all the SOCs uh, in in same in the same time. So from a SOC uh, approach, uh, I would uh, like to take you into uh, some experience that we have now for uh, doing uh, handling COVID. Uh, first of all, uh, during uh, COVID, uh, we uh, experienced the need for more insight in public and understandings uh, of the effects uh, from the different um, measures that we uh, implemented. So what we have done in, uh, in, in experience in COVID is uh, to um, is a, a broken, very important barrier where we are actually been using information from uh, the citizens about the citizens in our risk communication to the citizens. So when we look at impetus tools, uh, uh, social media the analysis or other tools also, so. This is uh, this what it's not familiar today, but uh, based on the experience from COVID, uh, we see that we are more uh, mature and more open for using uh, new sources and uh, new technologies, also in open communication uh, with uh, with uh, the citizens. Uh, one of the sources that we have been actively using is, um, as, as you know, um, uh, health uh, health uh, data uh, where we are addressing uh, how many infected, how many tested, how many in quarantine. So this is a very important barrier that we have uh, broken because we are actually using individual inf uh, information at individual level. So um, when we are, uh, as individuals, are exposing um, a risk for each other uh, for spreading the virus, so on the other side, when we are using the same approach uh, within the crime prevention and within the risk for uh, terror attacks or, or so forth, the principle are the same. But the tools and the data are, uh, are not connected uh, good enough, but uh, we see that is um, uh, that is a great opportunity to do this uh, in uh, based in them um, and in uh, technologies in impetus. So when we um, look at different tools uh, in impetus, it's not only uh, the tools that we are uh, very interested in in impetus, but also uh, as um, uh, Joe started with these three main elements: we have the process, we have the ethics, and we have the technology uh, element. And we uh, openly acknowledge that um, the development of the technologies runs much faster than what we are able to process in our daily operations. So these other elements, ethics and process, are, are very important for us also in um, in in this uh, in this uh, in this project. Uh, so when we uh, look uh, looking at the other side, uh, when we're finishing uh, in Petersburg, uh, what what will we have? Uh, we'll, 
where to go. So from a security operation center approach, what we, uh, we try today, we see a slightly uh, movement into a risk operation centers where we are using the same technologies from the security field, also used in the safety field for all type of uh, hazards and risk that we, uh, we are exposed to in, in Oslo. So uh, first of all, uh, these four, um, uh, four phases in uh, the SOC process, we are expanding uh, both the inside the information collection, and we are um, uh, decreasing the manual analysis uh, that we are doing today. So we expect to uh, expand the capacity for getting more knowledge about how the city lives, how this uh, city are within a different um, with the different uh, time of, of the year, and also a, a more efficient response, uh, how to activate different um, uh, different actors and how to mobilize um, uh, actors very, very, very early. So these three, uh, these, these four, uh, these four, uh, four phases in the SOC process, we expect uh, all these tools to, um, to strengthen our activities. So when we look at uh, this risk operation center approach, uh, especially from uh, sustainable um, goals number 11, we are very interested also in, in this overall approach disaster risk reduction. Security is a very important field, but at the same time, we know that we will use the same uh, uh, first responders. We use the same uh, agencies and the same uh, collaborators, uh, whether it's an earthquake uh, incident or a terror attack. So how can we connect all these uh, actors together and all these technologies and the knowledge that we have together and present it in, um, in a, good, a, good, a good way, a way to analyze where do we need to build the resilience in the city? So resilience is not only for, uh, for handling or detection of a terror attack, but also other uh, natural disasters. So in our work package for uh, change management, we are addressing uh, resilience engineering uh, where we um, uh, where we are looking into uh, the uh, the ability to uh, to analyze worst case scenarios in one hand, and on the other hand, uh, how can we um, uh, actually handle these worst case scenarios? So we have the technologies. Uh, we uh, are working on technologies to get uh, to gain more uh, information about um, our citizens, but. Uh, at, the, at the end, uh, th this is what we are uh, looking forward to uh, to build in um, in the city of Oslo, more re resilience in our all operations. So we expect to expand the user areas and learnings from impetus from the ethical uh, work package and the process work package, and especially um, to gain uh, more uh, insight and um, in the tools that we are um, developing in impetus. So to uh, give uh, to end my talk, uh, so this this is uh, what we are working forward to: uh, risk operation centers, where these technologies that we are using, especially the AI that we are using in different technologies, also can tomorrow uh, be further developed to um, uh, to uh, detect um, uh, anomalies in public movements uh, in in the cities. Use the same technologies, same cameras, but also for the development of uh, of uh, of these uh, different technologies. So I will end my talk. I know it's, uh, I had only a couple of minutes. So thank you. Thank you, Osman. And uh, then we have the last telling about uh, a community which uh, is uh, established in order to get feedback on what we are developing. Sandro, the floor is yours. So uh, what is COSEC? COSEC uh, stay for community of safe and secure cities is not replacing uh, exploitation activities, is part of dissemination activities and is mostly uh, oriented to define system requirements for uh, for Impetus platform and for uh, the different tools. So COSEC uh, is a, a kind of uh, stakeholder networks, but it was not uh, um, decided before the project started. Is growing together with the Impetus project. And uh, members of COSEC are smart city operators, emergency agencies, citizen organization, governmental authorities, researchers, and so on. 
Uh, so uh, that is uh, the relationship uh, between uh, COSEC and INTUS. Uh, actually, COSEC uh, will provide the system requirements to IMPTUS and IMPTUS uh, will provide the solutions uh, uh, to COSEC. And uh, there is a, um, there is a inter uh, continuous interaction in between uh, the, uh, the IMPTUS project and the COSEC. Uh, uh, and the COSEC. Uh, so we have uh, IMPTUS uh, with, IMPTUS partners and COSEC members. And uh, the goal is to make COSEC alive also after the end of the project, uh, the IMPTUS project. So this is uh, a requirements from uh, uh, COSEC. Uh, we got the requirements from the uh, description of activities. Uh, they are reported here. So it is expected by the end of the uh, IMPTUS project to have more than 40 members uh, into COSEC uh, representing more than 10 cities uh, and uh, more than five citizen group, uh, yeah, more than uh, uh, 10 EU countries. And uh, we expect to be participating to face-to-face uh, -face workshop and a number of we webinar at least two. two. What is the situation uh, with the COSEC today? Uh, not today, this was the situation at October 22. And here we can read the 24 members, but the big, because COSEC is a dynamic uh, network, it's growing. So today we are 25, not 24. 24 was uh, October 22. And we are uh, uh, six towns are represented, uh, and all the data are here. And uh, we didn't, uh, part uh, or at least the Cossack members didn't have the possibility to participate to face to face workshops uh, because of the COVID limitations. But uh, we have organized uh, up today two webinars, very interesting webinars. The first webinar was organized on uh, uh, beginning of May. And um, here uh, is uh, the, the program for the first webinar. And it was devoted on uh, trying to understand uh, the uh, use of advanced IT for the protection of public space. Um, so uh, we have uh, that, uh, quite two uh, interesting presentation. Uh, one reporting the, uh, uh, the experience uh, uh, from the town of uh, Tampere in Finland. Uh, they are running a project that is a sure project that is smart urban security and event resilience that has many uh, contact points uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, goals together with the IMPTUS. Uh, and uh, uh, another presentation was related to uh, SNAP for City. Uh, from the from a professor of the uh, city of Florence, and uh, I I have seen that uh, this uh, uh, collaboration is going on because it was mentioned by the, uh, one of the previous presentation. So uh, actually, what came uh, uh, out from this workshop was the importance of integration platform. This has been explained by previous presentation, but uh, you know, uh, technology today uh, can collect a quite different uh, uh, kind of information. The problem is uh, how to use all such information. How, and for that, uh, we need a, a, an integration platform because uh, uh, operators need uh, to, to get the input from the information and uh, operators cannot get, uh, let's say, uh, crazy with the all different information. Um, the next, uh, uh, we have organized a second webinar on um, mid of June. 
And this was uh, uh, addressing the other two uh, goal of the impetus project that is ethical and e legal issues. Uh, uh, probably you remember the first presentation from uh, Joe Gorman that was presenting uh, the three, uh, how, what is, is the final goal of impetus addressing all these three aspects, technology, ethical, aspect and also uh, the the process and uh, the, this was a quite interesting uh, uh, discussion uh, also also about uh, the uh, regulation uh, we have to satisfy in europe uh, there is this gdpr that was mentioned several times before and uh, also we have uh, uh, this problem of uh, application of artificial intelligence. Uh, I, you know, uh, there, uh, we have had a, a presentation before mentioning uh, the advantage of uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, they, very good, but uh, there are also disadvantages on the use of artificial intelligence and uh, the problem uh, with the perceived fairness and uh, we have had a, a very good presentation from Professor uh, Deepak from a University of Nebraska in the USA, uh, covering this aspect of a perceived fairness. Um, so that is a, a very hot topic uh, in Europe and uh, uh, maybe also in the United States and the rest of the world, uh, how to regulate the use of artificial intelligence uh, uh, for the uh, uh, or out uh, when you when you are collecting data uh, from the from the people uh, how to use the data uh, how, what is the limitation of using data and also in keeping data and all these uh, uh, cyber security aspects uh, uh, so is a, a lot of aspects um, and uh, uh, COSEC uh, uh, is trying uh, to, uh, uh, to help in the definition of the system requirements in, in a way that uh, the technology process and the ethical uh, um, uh, the suggestion coming from the uh, IMPTUS project uh, can really help, uh, can really help the uh, smart city, uh, smart city um, operators. If uh, you want to know more about uh, COSEC, or probably you want to join COSEC, uh, I hope so, that uh, we are 25, of, we have 25 members up today, and you have just to drop an email to me and uh, COSEC uh, uh, has a, a specific platform where uh, all the COSEC members can uh, put uh, their uh, um, questions, uh, start a discussion, or just uh, read uh, minutes from the uh, previous uh, webinars uh, and that we have had. Uh, just one point before to, uh, you need a to get uh, the credential to enter the cost platform, so you must be cost member uh, to get all advantages of uh, the COSEC platform. That is all from me, and I hope you will, will join COSEC. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandro, and that was all the presentations of impetus. Uh, I saw there was some questions, they are answered, but uh, uh, I don't know if everybody got that. We are a little bit over time, but Kyle, would you like to address those questions and the answers? Because I think it's good to share them. Hi, yes, of course. So we did have one question, which was, uh, let me just look for that. Um, so how is the interoperability of communication devices in multiple EU countries ensured? And do the tools support voice, text, and image messaging? 
And well, it's actually there's multiple questions wrapped up in one question. <laughs> so how frequently are the camera images archived and are they deleted in smart cities? So I think the, the larger question here is sort of in information sharing and data sharing. And Joe had already provided some information saying that from their perspective, the tool data is proprietary to each smart city and not shared with other EU countries. Uh, maybe somebody else might want to contribute that discussion as well, especially in terms of uh, interoperability of communication devices. Anyone like to add to that? Well, maybe I could say something on that. I, I think that I don't think there's any issue of interoperability between the countries because the concept here is that each smart city would have its, you know, its own system for what applies in that country. Although we have two test sites in the in the project, it doesn't mean to say that the the control room in Oslo is going to be talking to the control room in Italy. I mean that they we repeat the same things, install different the same tools, installed in each of those places. The other question about deleting the data, uh, Joe already mentioned compliance with GDPR. And a lot of the, the regulations associated with that are very strict on deleting data. Uh, and if we want to share data as we did, to share data from, you know, when, when Joe Levy in St. Edith in Switzerland wants to do the training of his AI system, he needs images from Norway. Uh, and there are very strict rules about how that data, even if only used for training purposes, has to be deleted the instant it's no longer needed and shouldn't be hanging around at all. The regulations are very strict and we comply with those. Okay, thanks a lot. And so this, the other question that came up was concerning the weapons detection tool. Is there any prior experience with impetus-like situations where you are trying to detect weapons through surveillance, surveillance, surveillance if I could say that properly, <laughs> of a large gathering? Do you have an idea of how accurate the detection is in this type of situation? And will the impetus project shed light on this question? And Joe had already provided an, a bit of an answer here, which was that the tool is, has gained prior experience in the Middle East and sensitive areas. Accuracy here defined with a spatial density in pixels is 25 by 25. And our team led by CTO Mikhail Postdoc in mathematics from the Institute Marie Curie, who, and who leads multiple AI projects for MIT, UCLA, and the US Navy has extremely high hopes that light will be very bright on this subject. Maybe there's something else to add to that, but it looked like it was sort of a, a uh, Joe-specific question there. Yeah, I'm here. I, yeah, I just want to add that uh, one thing. It's it's a, it's an ongoing research, and it's like cybersecurity. It never stops. So today, we have very clear, almost cutthroat directions from our CTO that says we have, you cannot combine what others are trying to do to have a model that's going to work for any camera, for any angle, that's not going to work. If not, you're going to need millions, maybe even he said, even this afternoon, 100 millions of images. The model of weapon detection, the technology of weapon detection, or any other technology that uses AI will get better over time, but you got to focus. And here, right here, I have a CCTV camera, for example, and you see it has an angle that points 30% down. So when, when you use the weapon detector, you need to have some specifics. It's same for face recognition. Uh, you, you can't apply face recognition with a camera that doesn't have a good enough resolution where it's underlit and so, and so on and so forth. So of course this question will be answered, but I have to say, Given the improved computing power that you can have on those edge devices allows you to do what we call image pre-processing, where you can play with the image before you process it with an AI. By doing this, of course, the, the sky is the limit, but right now the computing power is the limit, so we're going to have to wait for that. Great, thanks a lot. Appreciate the answer there and the, and the uh, further explanation. So, uh, Harold, that's just about it for today. We've got a little bit long. Uh, unless you have any closing remarks, I think we can go ahead and close out the session for today. Just wanted to say that this was only a flavor of the Impetus Project at the annual conference of teams. 
we will actually have one day going more in detail for those of you who like to know more. And you can contact everybody because we put out the presentations on the websites. And the annual conference takes place between uh, 6th to 10th of December. And we have about 55 presentations. The program comes out next week and it will be free to attend. It will be a morning session and it will be an afternoon session all on Zoom. That's what I would say today. And thank you for staying. We went a little bit over time. All right. Thank you, everybody. And yes, of course, there was a link in the chat. If you can fill out that survey, that'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, head to the Impetus uh, website there and find out more information about the project itself. And thanks to everybody for attending and as well as the panelists for sharing the insight and information. And thanks, everybody. Have a great day.